I'm pretty much in awe of the film. Uh, I say that not to patronize you, but it's a pretty amazing work. And I went in with high expectations, and you know, I walked out in cinematic air, <laughs> in, a sen in a sense. And you, you do something really great in this film. And one, one, one is that you make it work. You make the fictional aspects of it work, but you make the play work as well. Mm. And, and, did you, you, you knew where you were working on a lot of different levels in this film. Yes, yeah, and that, that was quite tough actually because you, you know, whenever you're shooting a scene in it, there are so many levels that are going on in it, which made the, the question about what the camera was doing and where it was and you know, when it was moving and when it would stop and all of those kind of things were, were you had to kind of feel your way with very carefully. Um, but, um, you know, I was a little apprehensive before we started as to whether or not you could make a movie about theatre work because usually they're very uneasy bedfellows. Um, and, uh, and the most thrilling part of it for me is, is, is actually the bit that deals with the play, which, you know, at the end of the movie, I kind of thought, well, we, you know, if it kind of collapses into montage at this point, you know, it's a quick resume of Romeo and Juliet. And, and I, you know, the, the, the great sort of delight of making the film is to discover how you know how beautifully it sort of sets up the, the working of the play so that the audience gets a chance to experience a play from the inside instead of from an audience perspective so you get this sort of bizarre thing where you know you're watching an audience watching the play and you're on the other side of that play and so there's this wonderful kind of mirroring and layering that starts to happen, so much so that if you watch it in an audience, you can't, I kind of know the movie backwards, I can't tell sometimes where the, where the laughter is coming from, whether it's coming from the cinema that I'm watching the movie in, or the, whether it's some of the laughter that I have happening in the movie itself. So, um, it, you know, it's an incredibly rare piece. It's a rare script, and, it, and it's, you know, I had the, the most amazing cast for it, and... Um, you know, it's kind of, it's felt a bit blessed, really. I don't, I mean, it was very, very tough to make. It was a tough film to make. Um, but, you know, I'm thrilled. You know, it's the first weekend it's been seen by anybody, and, uh, you know, it's people seem to be responding to it oh. incredibly well. Absolutely. And, yeah. he, and uh, all along I've seen Ed Zwick's name attached to it. Mm -hmm. at, at a point, was he going to direct this? He was, yeah. And he are you was. thrilled now that you did? I know it's directing as hell, but... I'm completely thrilled, you know, you get one of these in you your go, lifetime. You call Ed and go, if you're nah, lucky. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's been he's been terrific and supportive and you know, he's a producer of the film yeah. and um it must be a very, very, very odd process. He saw it about two weeks ago to watch a film that you've dreamed, you know, bodied forth in somebody else's imagination. But he's extraordinarily generous about it. When you look at, uh, and I can pick out a lot of people, but I want to focus on Judy Dench. Mm -hmm. When you look, just when she comes on camera, you just cannot not look at her. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only is it ornate, but it's interesting, and she's always a beat ahead of everybody. Because mm -hmm. she's so smart about things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it make you giggle, laugh when it you does make me. Yeah, well, it does make me giggle. I mean, uh, it, the part's a brilliantly written part on the, on the page. It, it, it just leaps out at you. It's so, you know, Tom's just got a kind of way with her that that is, is brilliantly kind of transcends your expectations about who she might be or what she is. Um, and it, you know, we just were able to build on that because she's such a genius actress, Judy, you know. Um, and it's, she's very important in terms of letting an audience into the movie. There's a moment that I always really enjoy because I, you know, I know now that it's going to work, which is... She's, there's a command performance of Two Gentlemen of Verona that because uh, all the theatres have been closed down and, and uh, she's watching this and she's roaring with laughter at this ridiculous scene with Lance and the dog. It's a piece of stand-up comedy, basically. And she's laughing like a drain in this completely vulgar way and then the movie cuts to a beautiful piece of poetry not very well delivered by the actor in it, intentionally so. And you cut back to her and she's looking absolutely bored, rigid. <laughs> And then she falls asleep. And somehow for an audience, it legitimizes everything. Because, you know, an audience that feels, oh, it's not correct to be bored by Shakespeare, you know, knows only too well you can be if it's done badly. Um, and you see that same speech, of course, later in the movie, done in a very different way that captivates the man who wrote the words. And, you know, it's just there's so many things like this in the film mm -hmm. that it's just it's a beautifully constructed and beautifully imagined script. Um, which hopefully we've done justice to, you know. You, with, um, it's just very unusual that you get the opportunity to do something like that. 
Thanks for making a great film. Thank yeah, you. Oh, I'm so proud of you, John.